Here I'll show you my top tips for using named ranges in Excel. Tips for creating, using, and managing them. And I think you'll find a few of them pretty interesting. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. To begin, we're going to start off with something pretty simple. Let's go with a very basic named range that will reference the total of these sales. So we have a cell down here. Just select it, go up here into the name box, click once, and type whatever you want. You cannot use spaces or weird characters. So basically just text, numbers, underscores, things like that. Total sales, enter. And now we have our very first named range. When we select the cell, you can see in the name box it says total sales. But that's pretty boring basic stuff. Now that we've got that down, let's talk about some of the cool things that we can do. One really fun way to add lots of named ranges at once, not just one by one in the name box, is if you have structured data like this, store one, two, three, four, five, six, we could also include total in that if we wanted to. You can select the data like this, and then go to formulas, go to defined names, that section, and click create from selection. You can see the keyboard shortcut there, control shift F3, but honestly, I never remember it. <laughs> so create from selection, and then you can choose where you want to get the names for the values. Top row, left column, bottom row, right column. When you select the data, the leftmost column will have the names for the ranges, and all of the columns to the right of that will be the named ranges. So let's hit OK now, and we can go to the name box, see all the named ranges here, and you'll see store one, two, three, four, five, six. We can click one, store three, and it selects the sales for store three, store two, and so on. Do note, if you have a lot of columns of data, if we had columns in between these two, it would add all of the columns that are not the leftmost column into the named range. So it doesn't work in every situation, but it's nice. Now we can very easily, quickly reference any one of the, there we go, like that, equals store two, okay. And now that we're getting a few named ranges in the workbook, it's much easier to manage them through the Name Manager. So Formulas tab Name Manager or Control F3 on the keyboard. And we can see all of our named ranges here with the names, the values, which cells they refer to right here, and their scope. The good thing about the Name Manager, if you only ever add your names within the workbook, is that when we go to add them here clicking New, we can change the scope. So do you want the named range to be accessible in the entire workbook, which is default, or just in a specific worksheet? It gets pretty confusing if you limit it in scope to worksheets, but there are some cases where that works. Let's hit Cancel here, not going to add a new name, but you can double-click it to edit the named ranges. You have filter options over here. The filter options are great when you have tons of named ranges or you're working with workbooks that you got from other people. So you can look for the errors, you know, you can do just the table names. When you have big workbooks, the filter option over here, amazing. And of course, you can also select a named range and hit delete to delete it from here. So the name manager is awesome. If you're working with names, you're going to be there quite a lot. And of course, for named ranges, even though I've showed you just individual cells now where it selects one cell when you click on named range, you can, of course, select a range store names, enter, and you can name the entire range, store sales, enter. And then, of course, the benefit of named ranges is you don't have to remember a named range, especially, especially if you are in another worksheet. So let's say that we want to get the highest sales. We want to get the store number. So we're going to do a little index match here. What do I want to return? Right now, I want to return store names. Row number, we use match. Lookup value is going to be max store sales. I can just keep typing. Don't have to use the mouse at all. Don't have to look up the ranges. It's so great, so much faster. Store sales, match type, exact match. Close the match, close the index. Control enter, perfecto, store three. And if I want to get the max, 
just max store sales bam bam and for low you can do the same thing although I'm not gonna make you watch me type it all out just go in here change max to men and men and the cool thing notice how I just select the range there it's automatically going to convert the range to the named range equivalent now if you don't want that you could type in the range by hand but we're going to leave it as it is and let's add a little bit of formatting to this dude and there you go so that's the benefit of named ranges and now let's do another really cool thing so we're starting to build up quite a few named ranges in our workbook let's say we want to list all of them go to a nice clean empty worksheet and you can hit F3 or if you don't remember that go to the formulas tab use in formula and all the way down here hidden at the bottom is paste names so F3 or paste names and go down to paste list and wherever whatever cell you had selected that's where the list of all the named ranges will go so we can expand this and you can see that it gives you the name of the named range and the cell to which it refers or the constant which I'll show you at the end of the tutorial so you can actually put hard-coded values here instead of just cell references so that's really great when you want a nice overview of what you've got in your workbook and you don't want to just do everything in the name manager now let's look at a really cool tip if you make let's make some really big named ranges here let's say big range one enter and let's go over here and make this big range to enter go home okay if you zoom out below it's 40 percent I believe so we're at 40 percent now if I go one more below it the named ranges are highlighted in the worksheet how cool is that now most of us would probably never know this because you don't go down to 30 percent zoom but when you're working with giant worksheets it can be so helpful to see what's going on with the data especially with large forecasts and financial models this is a really cool little feature so if you name the ranges you can see what they are you can see that this is sales forecast projections for store one or store three or whatever the heck it is and it gives you a nice quick overview of the sections of the worksheet if the user has correctly named the ranges it's my new favorite tip for named ranges zoom out below 40 percent and you get to see all the named ranges with their names I'm gonna leave that like that and let's move on to the next tip this one is pretty cool but you want to be a little bit careful with it so let's say that we are going to do high and low once again but this time well let's just do high actually we did this before we had our named ranges so a2 to a7 and then store sales b2 b7 copy that dude paste him here so we have the actual range references not the named ranges and let's remove that and equals max b2 to b7 okay now let's say you want to convert them to their named range equivalent select the cells where we want ranges converted to named ranges then we go to formulas define name apply names we can choose the names that we would like to have input into the formulas and then hit OK. Go down here and you'll see that our ranges are now converted to named ranges. Now you do have to be careful using this feature. It is a bit finicky. It can say, hey, there's too many characters for this formula and it can throw out some weird things here and there. So use at your own risk. OK, it's uh, it doesn't always work, <laughs> but when it does, it's awesome. So now you can convert your hard-coded ranges to named ranges. 
Now let's go to one of my favorite tips for when you work with really big spreadsheets, but you have some numbers that need to be constant throughout the entire spreadsheet. Think of them as global constants that should not change, but every worksheet should be able to use them. And it's called basically just using constants. So we use named ranges. Let's make here, let's say, a little cell for theft. And let's say it's a percentage of sales, and it's always going to be the same percentage. So what we can do is go to the Formulas tab, name Manager, New, and we can do Theft Percentage. Go down here, leave the scope as workbook and comment can be empty, and we do equals 0 0.07. So let's say that theft is always 7% of sales. And maybe we want to make it a little bit more descriptive. Theft percentage of sales. OK. Now we have, you can see these guys all have cell references, range references. And down here for theft percentage, we just have a simple hard-coded value equals 0.07. Close that. Now for theft percentage, we can do equals total sales times Theft percentage of sales. Input, we get a nice, neat value with good formatting now. And if we want to look at the formula later to see how was this number calculated, just double click total sales times theft percentage of sales. It's clear, it's easy to understand, it is not hard coded. And let me tell you, please be kind to all your coworkers and don't hard code these numbers in. Use named ranges with descriptive names. It makes everybody's life so much easier. And now the last two things I want to tell you about have to do with navigation. They're pretty cool too. The first one's kind of simple. And you just click the name box, and if you want to go to any one of these ranges, doesn't matter where you are, let's say big range one, just click it. It'll go to that worksheet and highlight everything. We want to go and see store one sales. Click it, it'll go right there. So it's a really awesome way to quickly navigate to your named ranges within the workbook. And my last favorite one, I really love this one. So let's say we want to go to store sales. We've got some sort of navigation or dashboard here. And one of the things is for store sales. So just input that there, right click, go to a link, choose place in this document. And you have two options, cell reference. So basically, where do you want to go for the worksheets or defined names? And we can choose where we want to go. Well, we want to go to store sales, click that. Hit OK. And now when we click store sales, it takes us to store sales and it highlights them. So we can create an awesome little navigational dashboard using named ranges. And that's really also one of my favorite little features with named ranges. As you can see, named ranges can be really, really helpful. I have to say, I don't think people use them enough, especially with constants, especially with navigating, especially, well, especially with everything that I've showed you here. <laughs> So I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and that's it for my top tips for using named ranges in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.